Hey everyone. I'm Harish. I'm from the release to production engineering team within Meta. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, a metric for infrastructure for sustainability, and we are currently calling it Beyond PUE. I think the, there are a couple of names that we are toying around with, fleet utilization, effectiveness, and stuff. But um, So yeah, Beyond PUE. So this is a joint collaboration between our infrastructure team as well as sustainability team. So even though I'm the only speaker here on stage, Jordan is in the audience. Uh, she has helped massively in preparing uh, content as well as like in guiding this work. Um, so this is again uh, an effort which is sort of like a case study. Uh, so this is not something that is completely implemented within our infrastructure, but we've been toying around with this metric for almost eight to 10 months. Um, so what I'm presenting is a proposal uh, to measuring uh, infrastructure uh, nuances using a metric which is just not based on PUE. So what is the problem statement that we are trying to tackle? Um, so the current challenge is, if you look at how embodied carbon is measured today and is, is attributed, it is incurred in the year the material is purchased. Um, so while that can be a, a good way to show uh, how much of a footprint one has, a large-scale fleet is inherently a dynamic and a moving entity. Uh, so there's a lot of decisions which are being made on a day-to-day -day basis, not just across operations, but also across like different layers of the stack. So a rest of the fleet is moving with like a dynamic decision-making framework, whereas the embodied carbon is just captured at that particular year when it occurs. So this creates this imbalance between like having some measurement which is static and the rest of the fleet which is dynamic. So it creates a bunch of limitations around how we measure and how we evaluate different efforts within our infrastructure. So internally, we've been toying around with a metric uh, which can show how the dynamic embodied carbon can be captured and also use that as a fleet accounting mechanism for embodied carbon and to standardize fleet metrics so that it goes along with the rest of the stuff that we measure in the fleet on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's evaluate what the status quo is, right? So let's say we run a large-scale infrastructure. Let's say we purchase servers in 2023 and they have associated upstream embodied scope three of 1,000 units. So the net attribution is calculated by using a recursive attribution to each commodity within the rack bound. So again, I'm using a very simple example here to say, okay, let's just consider one rack entity and it has like 1,000 units. So in the current model, it is only incurred in 23, and the rest of the years, we don't even know what's gonna happen with that resource that we accumulate. So hypothetically, one could game this metric by saying, okay, I'm gonna incur all my resource costs in 2023, I'm gonna turn them off, and then in 2024, I'm not gonna buy anything. Optically, it might look like 2024, you have zero emissions. Uh, which is the inherent problem that you have when you're measuring stuff in the fleet. You really want to be uh, good at understanding how clever you are with your resources throughout the life cycle and not just at the time you purchase them. So this representation that we have today, it does not capture how long a given rack is running for. It does not capture whether we are reusing parts within the rack, whether we have like considered circularity aspects within, you know, in, within our resource planning. It also doesn't capture how efficiently servers are being used. I think the previous talk kind of gave an overview of like around the efficiency factor, but it still does not account for resource and capacity timelines. And that's what we want to like address. So I'll just go through like what are some of the common aspects of large-scale infrastructure. So typically in a large-scale infrastructure, you have like reliability knobs to measure effective useful life of components and servers. So if you followed earnings reports from a majority of hyperscalers, you will see that a bunch of them have actually extended the useful life of servers. A number of hyperscalers also have a lot of dedicated initiatives to around uh, reusing components as well as recycling components. So there's a generally a lot of exploration around using reliability as a guidance factor to extend the life of components. And in addition, you have like a bunch of efficiency knobs which are used to drive better utilization and effective use of hardware at scale. So these are you know, based on software updates, compiler updates, anything that you can think of like, which are part of the software stack. And then you have like, all these operational processes that happen within the fleet, which is firmware uh, uh, you know, updates as well as like, hardware repairs, uh, which lead to like, effective usage of servers in the fleet. So let's just consider this case of extending useful life of servers. Right? So we, we are extending the useful life of servers to extract more value from prior purchases. So what typically extending life of servers means is you're using that resource longer, which means you can defer your spend on refreshing that resource a bit later. So typically in financial practices, there are two different components associated here. So in financial practices, the cost to acquire a resource is considered as capex based on which type of resource it is. And if you change the useful life of a given resource, it is typically measured using the depreciation cycle associated with that useful life. 
For example, if you're buying, a, again, a car or a server, if it has three years of useful life, you're saying that it is depreciating at, you know, $3, $30 per year. If you use it for five years, you have like a $200 depreciation. So similarly, we should, from an embodied carbon emissions perspective, have a way to measure how this resource is being sliced with the useful life that you have for a given fleet. So this is a currently, we think, is a missing measurement from a fleet perspective. So this is very well established in the financial accounting community, but it's not being followed within, uh, you know, in the fleet measurement. So the first proposal that we have is to allow for accurate measurement of dynamic fleet uh, for scope three emissions that you accrue. So you change from a thousand, which is occurred just, you know, incurred in like only 2023, and you go from thousand to like 200, which is let's say if the useful life is approximately five years, you incur. So even though, you know, in the standard reporting practices around like, you know, how your company reports, it could still be a thousand. For your measurements within the fleet, you can say every year, because I use it for five years, it's 200 units. So that's allowing you to like resource slice uh, across a given time scale. You can do this with months, you can do this with days. I'm just using it as a years because that's commonly used. So just a bit more discussion on depreciation, right? Uh, so the depreciation per year here, because the timeline is year, we are saying that it is incurred scope three embodied carbon divided by the useful life of that device. Again, it could be a component, it could be a server, it could be a rack. I'm just using server as an example. So this allows for like standardizing fleet operational metrics. So this is actually a standard practice in financial reporting. So there is, there is a reason why depreciation is used because it actually allows you to showcase how your expense is at a, a, a predictable basis. So imagine you have like a lot of expense in a given year, no expense in the next year, and a lot of expense in like two years later, actually creates a very big skew on evaluating whether your company is allocating resources appropriately. So the same thing could be applied to not just the dollar values, but also the carbon assets that you accumulate. So this allows inherently for evaluation of, you know, increasing the life of selected batch of servers and saying, okay, what is the value that I get from a carbon perspective? And you could also do reusing of parts, recycling of parts, and do the same emission impact. And if you go back to the efficiency, and again, some of this was covered in the previous talk, efficiency is measured as useful work extracted out of the resource with the least amount of resource wastage, can be measured at different time scales. Um, so it is also usually like an aggregated metric that is aggregated across like different layers of the stack. Um, and there are typically different metrics like PUV and HUV, which are used in infrastructure. So while the traditional view of efficiency is only applied for operational carbon, our proposal here is that even the embodied carbon, which is depreciated at a certain time scale, should be considered when you look at resource and efficiency together. So if we, I think in the last OCP summit, uh, our power telemetry as well as like our thermal teams presented hardware usage effectiveness. So it's just an extension of PUE. Um, so in hardware usage effectiveness, you have total IT power as a numerator, and then you have like something which is called as information processing power, which is as part of the denominator. And again, if you look at efficiency, these are evolutionary in nature. They improve gen over gen. Some of the time, hardware efficiency gains are realized by changing, you know, which architecture you go for, or like you know, improving your repair cycles, or having longer life. Firmware ins are, you know, realized at the cadence of your firmware updates and what type of updates you make. And software wins are, like, you know, realized by just changes that are propagating across the stack. So, if you combine the two aspects that I've been talking about, what we are proposing here is as a way to do resource slicing. So we have these instantaneous measurement of efficiency, which is there as part of the fleet. So using depreciation and a desired useful life of accumulated resources, one can arrive at resource slicing, as a, resource slicing at a particular time scale. So for example, let's say we go back to the same example which we had around like 1,000 units uh, of CO2E. Um, so let's say the server useful life is five years. Here, what that means is the resource attribution is 200 units of CO2E per year. What this implies is if the infrastructure utilized all these servers at 100% effectiveness for one year, then we have reached sort of the theoretical max that we could have done with those accumulated resources. So in essence, what you could then say is the utilization effective metrics for a given time scale times the embodied depreciated carbon metric for the same time scale actually can provide you with a live measure of fleet effectiveness towards meeting sustainability target. So the proposed metric is you take the utilization effectiveness, which is sort of a live metric that is coming from the efficiency side, you have this embodied emissions which is depreciated which is coming from the resource allocation and resource slicing side and you merge them together. So the proposed metric in action is, you know, if, if you just use HUV as the effectiveness metric uh, for the example, 
and if you use the depreciated uh, carbon emissions with respect to useful life as an example, what could then unlock within infrastructure is you can then evaluate actually competing cases against each other and be able to weigh one use case versus the other. So imagine a scenario where I have a service which is running in, in, our, in our fleet. Today they are running on a server which can run for five years. And they figured out a way in which they can actually run on an older server, but they can still achieve the same amount of efficiency. Today, based on how we are measuring embodied carbon and how we represent it, there is no way to represent a service optimizing to run on an older hardware which has a different useful life and being able to capture that win as part of a dynamic infrastructure. While this metric will allow us to do that. So the goal for the fleet then becomes uh, is to minimize like uh, the above metric. So anything that you do from a utilization effectiveness immediately factors into HUV. Anything that you do from a life cycle, re reuse, recycle, and like extension of life immediately factors into your embodied carbon depreciation factor. And then together you can then say, make decisions like, you know, should I increase my server use of life? And if you change from five to seven, what is the impact for the fleet? If you reuse a component which has 15% footprint for a given server, you can then say, okay, how, how does this meet metric reduce with time? You can also use the same equation for measuring and uh, you know, reducing the HUV to be as close to one as possible. And the same could also be used for infrastructure decisions where you can say, okay, is, am I spending more time in the efficiency side or am I spending more time in the resource side? So that you can then start evaluating competing trade-offs there are very complex trade-offs that are in infrastructure and then start bringing them all together on the same metric to make appropriate infrastructure decisions. For example, one can say, hey, let's go for something that gives low efficiency, but has low useful life, uh, but you know, higher co lower cost rather, and then higher efficiency, higher useful life, higher cost, but maybe that is better from a sustainable perspective. So there are all these options, which are usually split across like variety of functions within, a, within an organization can be brought together into a single decision framework, and then one can use the same metric to make all these decisions. So the call to action is, yeah, large-scale infrastructure uh, requires a dynamic resource measurement as well, al along with dynamic efficiency measurements. Static metrics are just, uh, you know, kind of like a frozen in time view of uh, infrastructure use cases and uh, it doesn't represent how dynamic a fleet can be. So we propose that we connect depreciation with some of the utilization effective measurements that we have so that we have not just an efficiency view, but we also have a capacity and a capacity uh, utilization view. And within Meta, we've actually been working on a multi-year effort to standardize this and use this as a metric for enabling a good decision framework across all the different organizations that we have which are working towards this one common goal. So with that, uh, I thank you for providing the opportunity. I'm kind of a newbie for this work stream, typically present in the compute and memory work stream, but happy to have this opportunity. Thank you. being siloed from um, overall embodied carbon accounting, given the fact that there's quick um, uh, timelines that we have to reduce our embodied carbon and not wanting to use um, amortization of, of embodied carbon over time as a type of accounting trick to meet the, the big goals that we have. Yeah, actually, I think today there's a lot of chance for gamification around even if you accrue all of it at once, where you can then say, let's say, the target is 2026 net zero, for example, I mean, just making up a case, right? You can then say, okay, I'll accrue all the stuff in 2025, and then, you know, 2026 I'm clean, uh, because that's what my target is. But actually depreciation and sort of this measuring with time, even though from a reporting perspective could st still be gamified, it actually allows you to predictably evaluate whether an organization is moving towards a given direction. So this is actually the exact same thing that is used in financial earnings reports, and like, you know, SEC requires that the earnings meet the standard because it allows you to like have a predictable understanding of what the finances of the company look like. And I think the same rigor that we hold to our financial reporting, I mean, I, I'm being optimistic here, which we can bring to this reporting so that like people are more, a lot more incentivized to be honest and not, uh, you know, uh, and at the same time kind of work towards a common goal rather than just evaluating like a point in type scenario. Yeah. 